I am the creator and director of an online educational video series, <coughs> Ethics Unwrapped, which is produced by the Business School. And today I'm going to be um, sharing with you a project that we've been doing over the last two years on the UT campus called the Ethics Curriculum Integration Initiative. It's been a two-year project, um, and it was supported by the Tebow Foundation and the UT Provost Office. And it was really a combination of my program, Ethics Unwrapped, and another program called the Ethics and Leadership Flag, <coughs> which is run out of the School of Undergraduate Studies. Um, we went into the project with a few generally big questions. Uh, we wanted to know what impact did the digital age have basically on ethics education and what sorts of resources, teaching resources, could we develop that would be useful for our faculty and faculty elsewhere to help teach ethics. Uh, we were also curious to know how could we support trends towards interdisciplinarity that we were seeing on our campus. So these are sort of the big picture um, questions we had going into the project. Before I get into the details of the project, let me tell you about the two programs that came together to make it happen. Um, the first is Ethics Unwrapped, and it, as I mentioned, is an online educational video series. Right now we have 48 videos on the website. And all of our videos are supported by teaching resources, teaching tools. Everything we do is available online, and it's all available to the general public at no cost. We have about 500 colleges uh, and universities who have used our materials over the last four years. Um, we have about 140 colleges and universities this uh, year that have been frequent, regular users. Had about half a million views on YouTube so far, and we've won some awards for academic and filmmaking excellence. And this just gives you an idea of the growth in views. You can see it took us about 18 months to crack that first 100,000, mm -hmm. but over the last semester, we've been adding somewhere between 30 and 50,000 views a month. So all of a sudden, it's really taken off. Um, why videos? Well, we just heard one reason why videos. <laughs> Here's another, which you may be have firsthand experience with more than half of the waking hours that young people spend today are connected to a device of some court. You know, they're always looking at a screen. And as this author, I think, so astutely notes, they're often looking to be entertained. Uh, and in the classroom, one way to uh, engage is to entertain them, try to kind of make that pathway towards educating. Um, the content of Ethics Unwrapped focuses largely on behavioral ethics which is a relatively new field that's interdisciplinary. It draws on behavioral psychology and neuroscience, biology, other social sciences, to really take a look at how and why people make the ethical and unethical decisions that they do. It's not a substitute for a philosophical approach to ethics education, but it's a very nice complement to it. Um, I'm not going to give you a lecture on behavioral ethics, I'll just go right to the bottom line, <laughs> which is that um, we often see what we are looking for, uh, and that that really obscures uh, our ability to see things clearly and dims our moral awareness, and that's further impacted by things like uh, social and organizational pressures, peer pressure, for example, or the desire to please your boss, uh, or by other psychological biases, we're all self-serving and overconfident, so that tends to get in our way of seeing and evaluating situations clearly. And other such situational factors that basically cause us to act without awareness and often uh, unethically, kind of making sub-ethical, sub-optimal ethical decisions. But the way the Ethics Unwrapped is <coughs> organized in three main series, three main video series, uh, Cases Unwrapped, Giving Voice to Values, and Concepts Unwrapped. Um, the Giving Voice to Values is based on a book by Mary Gentile that some of you may be familiar with. Uh, Cases Unwrapped has one 25-minute documentary with six shorts in it. And the bulk of our material is in this series called Concepts Unwrapped, where we take expert content and we combine it with students reflecting on that idea. So we take a specific ethics concept, say for example, incrementalism, otherwise known as the slippery slope. And we have students talk about that idea uh, and related to their own life. So you have one Hershey's kiss, and then you have two Hershey's kisses, and then all before you know it, the whole bag is gone. <laughs> uh, so that sort of idea, and it really takes what would be a more abstract concept and ground it in students' everyday life. So uh, all of these are the teaching resources that we offer. All of our videos have teaching resources because we don't believe that the videos are a substitute for conversation in the classroom, for discussion. 
um, and we want to support that. So we offer discussion questions for the videos as well as case studies that take the concept and um, bring it out in a real life situation. We offer case study uh, uh, questions, discussion questions, and then we have things like bibliography, additional reading notes, uh, and teaching notes. So if you're not familiar with this idea, you can go and take a look at this video where these two series fit well together. So ways in which we can kind of help instructors find connecting ideas within the content that we have. Everything we do is available in Spanish. All of our videos and materials are translated. We're in Texas. It's a big part of what we do down there. Um, the Ethics and Leadership Flag Program, which was the other half of this initiative, is a campus-wide undergraduate initiative. The university identified six academic skill areas, and it gave a flag to each one of those skill areas. In order for undergraduates to graduate, they have to accumulate all six flags. And so for the ethics and leadership flag, 30% uh, of the graded content in the course had to be a practical ethics component. Um, and the first flag courses were offered in 2009 with the hope that they would be fully implemented by this coming fall. The goal for the ethics and leadership flag is the same goal as Ethics Unwrapped, which made it a nice marriage of these two programs when we went forward with the initiative. You know, essentially, we we're out there to raise uh, ethical awareness amongst the students, to improve their critical uh, decision-making skills, and to ultimately promote ethical action so that they can go out there and be better citizens, better leaders, uh, and we can hopefully create a better world. It's a big goal, but we're doing our best. <laughs> <coughs> when the flag program was put into place, they faced a quite a few challenges. Um, primarily, the faculty who were teaching these flag courses were not versed in ethics. You know, this was content that was outside their discipline. They were being asked to bring it into their classroom, and they didn't know how. There was no ethics center on campus. There still isn't. And so there was no central repository for materials to either be uh, created and disseminated or for things to live. Um, there was also, of course, uh, a huge range of classroom sizes and formats on the UT campus. Everything from you know small 20, uh, 20 student seminars to thousand student online courses. And the, all of these uh, varieties carried the flag. Uh, the ethics and leadership um, coordinator started uh, an, an instructor wiki uh, as a place to sort of house resources for the flag program, but she found it difficult to update and maintain. Instructors found it difficult to navigate and use, and so after a couple of years, it was basically abandoned. So that left her kind of with a void. Uh, how was she going to get ethics integrated into a wide variety of, of courses across the country? <coughs> so we teamed up. Um, and these were our goals for the curriculum integration project. They were pretty straightforward. Um, we wanted a project that would be sustainable past the two years uh, we wanted something that could be replicated on other campuses. We knew that accessibility of resources was an issue. The wiki had failed, so we knew that we needed something that instructors could easily find what they were looking for uh, and that the resources would be available easily to students as well. Um, we needed content that was going to be suitable across a variety of disciplines, so we needed stuff that we could adapt to different disciplines and could be responsive to different types of courses. Um, it really pushed us towards concept-based content, which we were already creating with Ethics Unwrapped. We also uh, had the goal, of course, of getting faculty feedback and input on our teaching resources. We had already developed some teaching resources. We knew we needed other materials, but we didn't know exactly what. And so we figured if we could work with faculty to develop these resources, we would get uh, you know, much better uh, resources available to them. And of course, we wanted to work with a wide range of uh, classroom formats and classes sizes and primarily for me I wanted to assess the efficacy of the videos as a teaching tool because we had seen mm -hmm. an uptake in program growth but I had no idea whether the tools were actually effective at teaching and learning uh, the material so um, we're in the last semester of the project we'll be wrapping it up over the summer um, over the last two years, we've integrated ethics, uh, practical ethics, into 25 courses across seven colleges on the campus. Um, we worked at first with uh, three colleges in the first year, a liberal arts, fine arts, and the College of Education. 
and we had ah working groups, faculty working groups at each of these colleges and we asked the faculty on these working groups what kinds of concepts would be helpful for you. we wanted to know you know if we were going to be producing content what sort of concepts would be applicable across a wide variety of disciplines and so we got a long list as you can imagine and we narrowed it down to a dozen which we which we had the budget to actually make so the first year we produced eight new videos that were integrated into the courses we also um, in faculty uh, sessions discovered that case studies were extremely important to the faculty um, it was one thing to have an abstract concept and student examples that kind of grounded that idea but what about actual real life cases that the faculty could connect with and teach with and so over the course of the year we wrote about 20 cases with the faculty including the discussion questions to help tease out those abstract ethical concepts um, as you can see we modified 16 different courses um, and we worked with a range of courses we really targeted large undergraduate courses we, we also looked for smaller seminar type courses um, and we surveyed about 2200 students at the end of the first year I'll show you the assessment is, is, uh, results in a second let me talk about the second year so this, we're just wrapping up our second year now we added two more colleges the second year we went to the College of Natural Science and then we also pulled in the Moody College of Communication and uh, we produced four more of those videos from that list of a dozen that we had identified the first year and we're in the process of writing 30 more case studies with the faculty because those have really uh, turned out to be a strong uh, teaching tool for them we integrated about 30 videos uh, across all of these different courses and we uh, retained the vast majority of the original 16 courses and we repeated them again this year and we added nine more courses uh, so we ended up with the 25 total um, we are surveying about 4,000 uh, more students this year to, to understand whether the videos are effective as a teaching tool and we started surveying um, faculty we want to know uh, are these tools helpful for you you know do you find them something that adds to uh, to your teaching add to the learning of your students that sort of thing um, and again, uh, we're reaching about four and a half thousand students with this initiative this year on campus. And there's a couple of, uh, I'll, I'll give you some examples of the integration. So here's an example. This was a US foreign policy, the government course taught in the College of Liberal Arts. Uh, 800 students, a uh, fully online course. It's taught every semester, fall, spring, and the long session in the summer. Um, and here they have they integrated four videos into this course here's an example um, of the prompts that they use so they watch a video the students watch a video then they answer a question um, so the video says this how do you agree how you know etc and then they're asked at the bottom can you apply this concept of relativism in this case to uh, a, a relativistic approach to foreign policy on terrorism so it's actually taking the idea, the concept, and integrated into the content. Here's another example from the same class. This was a video on causing harm, different types of harm, justified and unjustified harm. Again, the students were asked to watch the video, to take our survey, <laughs> to answer a question, and then uh, in this case, you know, what types of harms are caused by torture? Uh, and to, uh, you know, is torture ever ethically justifiable? So they're asked to apply the knowledge to the content of the course last example from this class fundamental moral unit um, so we're not strictly behavioral ethics we do have some other um, ethical content in there and again same same format watch the video take the survey uh, and in this case um, talk about fundamental moral unit as it applies to environmental policy uh, here's an example from the American presidency is another government course uh, taught in the College of Liberal Arts but this was a traditional course and it had about a hundred students in it and this uh, <coughs> this instructor used uh, the integration uh, of the videos in her homework assignments primarily so here's an example of a homework assignment um, that she built in, in uh, canvas the first thing she asked students to do is to watch a video um, then she provides them with a case study read the case study then apply the concept of the video to the content of the case study 
and uh, and she she asks three questions, and they write a brief essay responding to each of the questions. She did the same thing, for example, with the idea of bounded ethicality. In this case, she took the idea of bounded ethicality and applied it to a case study, which was uh, the the leak of the CIA agent Valerie Plain, and uh, and then asked students watch the video, read the case study, and uh, and answer the questions. Okay. Here we go. Um, the last example I'm going to show you is from a uh, course this year. It's a one-year, uh, year-long professional development course in the College of Natural Science. It's geared towards the cream of the crop chemistry uh, students. It's about 75 students per class. And these students, they're grooming to become teaching assistants and assistant instructors. So they felt it was important to, keep, to have a leadership and ethics component in that. Uh, and this is what... Uh, we would call, I suppose, a blended class. The most of the most of the content of the class is discussion, in-person discussion. But then there are these learning modules that are, they are asked to complete outside of class, and then bring the content to class for discussion. So in this case, um, the instructor set up an introduction to the idea. The idea then asked them to watch the video on moral awareness, which is the first the first of James Rest and colleagues' steps towards. Um, to moral action. Uh, then she set up some scenarios. So she said, okay, given this idea of moral awareness, here are some scenarios that you might find yourself in as, as teaching assistants, cheating on math homework. You know, how does that apply to you personally? What if you had a student come to you talking about the cheating? So y the students are required to go through the scenarios, write down their responses to them, and then bring their responses to class uh, in order to get credit for discussion that they have in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, then, of course, they're asked to take our survey. <laughs> and um, uh, and they have five uh, ethics modules in this chemistry class this year, and they're going to double the number for next year because they find them incredibly effective tools, and the feedback that they've got from the students is that it really is helping them a lot to prepare them for what sorts of things they might encounter when they get out there. So here's the assessment data. Um, this is self-reporting. So uh, every time a student watched a video in one of the courses where we integrated, we had them watch the video embedded in uh, a survey tool. And after they watched the video, they answered a bunch of questions for us. Uh, the first question we asked them was, how helpful was the video for explaining the ethics concept blank? And you can see here, 90% of the students found the video helpful to learning the content. They really like videos. <laughs> <laughs> then we also asked them, OK, so we want to know a little bit more in detail. Um, we asked them, rate your confidence in your ability to identify the concept, explain the concept, engage in a conversation about the concept, and make an informed decision based on that concept. Mm -hmm. And we asked them the question twice. We were trying to correct for overconfidence. You don't know what you don't know. So we asked them the set of questions right after they watched the video, and then we asked them the questions again. OK, now think back to before you watched the video and what you knew then. How confident are you that you could have done these things? What we found was that students self-reported. Over half of them did were not confident that they could identify, explain, engage, or make a decision about that ethics concept before they watched the video. And 78% of those students became confident after watching the video. So that to us, it, you know, whether they, whether it's self-reporting accurately, we can't tell. Um, but what we can tell is that they're feeling more confident in their ability to identify, explain, and engage with these ideas after watching the videos. We also did a thematic analysis of the student comments. Um, about 10% of the videos, uh, you know, we had an open field. We asked them to rate different aspects of the videos. How did they like the animations, the student interview, the expert content? And then we also gave them an open field to give us feedback. Um, and about 10% of them did. So this represents about 450 comments. Uh, no comment was counted twice, so it had to fit into one of these categories here. Um, the general queries were things like, that was dope. You know, we just get <laughs> stuff like that, <laughs> which doesn't really give us a lot of information, <laughs> except that they liked it. Then if they had a general criticism, so they might have had a compliment, hey, I really like that, but 
I thought that that girl with the white scarf didn't know what she was talking about. Then we, we put that into the general criticism category. Um, about the same number of them talked about how useful the video was for them to learning, as gave us ideas for improving the videos. So we liked that. Um, we also got uh, a significant amount, in my estimation, of people who had uh, exhibited deeper engagement with the topic. So the video actually prompted them to think more deeply about what the topic was, and then they expanded. Hey, the video said this, but I really think this, that, and the other about this idea, and how come you didn't include, et cetera, that sort of thing. Um, and then we had about 5% off topic. I don't know if you can read any of those, but, um, but basically the students are saying a lot of the same things that we heard from Luke which was that the students were really uh, engaged by the content, that they liked hearing their own voices, that peer reflection was very important to them, um, and that they, they didn't feel like they were being lectured at, uh, which is important when you're talking about ethics content. <coughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Um, so uh, very quickly, I'll just tell you, we also um, had some started assessing faculty. This represents a small segment, only about 30 responses. We, huh. uh, we got the faculty involved in the project and a few outside. What we found was that um, there was sort of an equal number of uh, faculty, a third and a third, assigning the videos outside of class and, and using them inside of class. Um, and then here, 90% of the faculty that we uh, surveyed said that they found the videos helpful uh, as teaching and learning tools. So that uh, really spoke to us. And um, they liked our teaching resources. They would, eight, almost 80% of them would recommend us to a colleague, which is very important to us because everything we do is basically word of mouth. So let me just leave you with two quick things. Out of this project has come the need for two things we realized. One was a teaching guide. By the end of the summer, we'll have almost 100 videos on the Ethics Unrep website and 50 case studies. It's an overwhelming amount of material to navigate. So we're putting together an interactive guide on our website that really breaks down all of our content. It's curated by topic. And it will look something like this. So you can go and pick a topic area and then you'll get a suggestion of videos, case studies, glossary terms, um, things that you might need related to your topic to help. And it also will give you a, uh, an idea of what those themes are in your topic area that are being discussed. And then we're gonna do a glossary because that was another thing that came out of the project. Students can't have a good conversation about ethics if they don't have a basic vocabulary mm -hmm. around the content. So we're doing 50, I've been working on 50 short one mm -hmm. to two minute animated videos and that's gonna be out again at the end of the summer. So that things like this, fully animated. We'll take questions at the end. Mm -hmm.